Hey guys, it's Jamie, and I wanted to talk to you about my dragonflies and some of the changes going on here. I just finished teaching a class, and um, I showed them how to do this type of tail now, which is different from the initial ones. The initial ones in my earlier video, which you can still watch on YouTube, the, the beads would look something like this. So here's the head, and then I would have the wings right in here, and then the rest of the tail and um, the beads would, would taper in size until you got to the tail. Um, but now what I'm doing is creating a bead with a little spacer in between that this glue glazes onto and fires that way. So it just gives it a little bit more pop of color. Um, so I'm gonna show you how to do that. It's bigger than a golf ball, but not as big as a tennis ball is what I start out with generally. And then you're gonna cut off what you don't need anyway. So you're gonna, you want a carrot is the goal here. And I think this part is still a little bit too thick. All right, I think that's good. Now you're going to cut off nine inches. So somewhere in the middle, probably right here. Now keep that, that ruler in place, whatever you're using, because you're going to mark this. We're going to go by the inch. This automatically comes the tail and that becomes the head and this is the rest of the body. Now before you take that ruler away, another thing I'd like to do is maybe cut about a quarter inch off. Actually, I'm just going to eyeball it from here. Now you have this little piece here. I'm going to push back into round. And now I'm just going to press in so I have a flat bottom on one side and a curved in bottom on the next side. I'm going to take my uh, hole maker, put a hole in that. That one's done. This guy. And I'm going to take my thick skewer, punch through, tap, punch through, do that for all the pieces here. So that's it. That's what you're looking for. So now I'm going to show you how to mix it up even more. So we saw this kind of tail here. Um, my next step is to make this a little bit more elaborate. And I've done that by creating different strands and using different kind of beads in here. So the majority of this is all still handmade. Um, I do have some store purchased African glass beads in here. So right here inside the little studio, you're not seeing the full beauty of them. So I'll include a picture out in the sun. But, um, you know, just imagine this guy, you know, with this tail on him instead, <laughs> you know, it's a little bit more elaborate and flashy. So um, same idea here with this one. Um, these are these two strands are pretty much the same. The only difference is that you know the color of the glass bead is different within and then I have different pops of color throughout. So these are all single beads that I've put together um, and then this right here I have one bead that's super long and I'm going to show you that technique plus how to make these individual textured beads like that. Here are some of the other beads I was talking about. A single bead like this. And then these little guys are just like the little spacers that I was mentioning. So if you're going to do a tail like I just showed you, then you need to make multiple components. Um, this is what the beads look like outside of the dragonfly. And so you want them to create, I like to create something that can go around them. So this one would go like that. And this one would go like that. It's helpful to know 
the size of your bead if you're going to be working with it before you start so you make the right size of these. Um, also, you can change the appearance of your bead just by changing the size of your casing. So for example, we have this bead here. I can make it kind of appear to be a bigger one just by having, I don't, I don't see as much as the bead, but the width is bigger than say this. And here you get to see more of the bead. So when you're making a dragonfly, you could do trickery just by creating bigger casings on the outside as you go down the tail. This bead here, um, these are separate colored beads um, on a different clay body. I just wanted to get a brighter color, pop of color. So I just did under glazes on around on the outside. These ones I left raw. I didn't put any kind of, um, I want them to be bat. I didn't put any kind of shine on them. But the other tail, I put some clear glaze on it, so it's a little bit more shiny. Um, I think making these kind of beads is pretty straightforward. They're just little circles with a hole in it, right? I'm not going to show you that. Um, but for these guys, it's worthwhile, I think, talking about how to get these shapes. So like everything, we start off with your clay. And um, this is about a quarter size I, I use, and then, uh, so it's maybe about a half inch circle. And then, of course, the smaller ones are a little bit smaller. But you just experiment. Now, um, for this guy, I'm going to do that one first because it's important that you use really fresh clay when rolling that. So um, I'm going to first roll a coil. So now you're going to take this and you're going to take it down and kind of tap it down here and then take it around here and tap it down here. It, you want to have flat edges for the other beads to go up against and then once you have your flat edges then you can just twist and remove. Ta -da. So this is a chunkier one. You might want to have a, a thinner coil you know, to get a smaller. This is a little bit tapered as well. So you'd create like the carrot coil. All right, now for the other bits. All right, once I have my balls, then I'm gonna pick a, a texture. For this guy, I took this rose. So I'm just gonna stick that in there. Take that out. And voila. Another fun texture to do is um, something like this. All right, so um, I just sit there and I make a ton of these things. Um, and then I can either use my thumb to shape. So that's where I'm going to get the best savings for the texture is just to use gently your thumb. Um, but I ran across these tools in TJ Maxx. And I put them on a sponge and just went boop, 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 boop. And, you know, that was fun. Anyway, if you're doing a lot of them, yeah. not It's kind of useless when you're doing them this way. All right, once you've done this, you need to let them set up before you put the hole in it. Or just put them upside down when you do the hole. For example. It doesn't really matter because the part that you're pressing into the ground is the part that comes off. So you just want to make sure that you keep that curve shape. All right, so now I'm going to show you um, this style of bead. So you could do the same thing I did with my roll the carrot, the nine inch carrot, and then just slice it up. And then each piece um, I just put back to round after slicing. And um, I like to do it on the skewer. And then once it's on the skewer, I just take a stick tool. And I start rolling it and just making impressions. So it could be anything. It doesn't have to be a stick tool. It could be 
um, anything you find, whatever texture pleases you. Anyway, that's, that's that texture there. So I would just make a bunch of those um, to go on the dragonfly. I have a pair of wings and I need to string these up. Um, before I do that, um, I want to talk about what I'm seeing on the back here. Um, this is the iron stain and a little bit of the iron stain got stuck to the shelf. So um, I'm going to show you my cheat um, for iron stain pieces and that is a brown sharpie. So I'm going to just color it in and then use my finger to smooth it around and voila it's gone. Is the strand I came up with for um, the that dragonfly. I used all these five of these um, dark brown beads in here and one of the red beads and I want to sub out two of the brown ones for red beads in here. So I'm going to go ahead and undo this and put it all together. that better. So um, even though the these beads are a little bit bigger than the brown ones, I think that the size of their casings uh, work okay, so it's not too noticeable for me. I like it. All right, there you go. Uh, I'll probably be back to do another video on actually glazing the wings, um, so stay tuned for that. Hey, I'm back with glazing. So um, first thing you're going to do is get all the rough spots off your wings. So take some um, sandpaper, go outside and sand it down and then wipe it down with a damp sponge when you're done. Now here what I'm doing is I'm putting uh, blue tape around the body where I'm going to do staining. So I'm just using an iron oxide stain here. I'm going to paint it on and then smear it around. This stuff is super messy. I don't mind it getting on my hand, so, um, but you might want to put a pair of gloves when you're doing this. So you paint it on and then you work it through. And then I just get picky about how I want it to display through. You just don't put it on straight. You have to have some wipe away going on um, to see it capture the texture. And um, so now, uh, after I do that part, I'm gonna just go around the sides. And this part, I do leave at full strength most of the time. So I'm not gonna wipe this away. But on the back of the wing, I'll put a stripe in and then I'll work it in. So full strength on the tips, but on the back, um, you're just gonna work it in so you can really see the texture. So next up is um, all the beads and the other tail parts. I'm separating them out here for ones that are going to get an iron stain and I'm just using a potato masher to put them right into the bucket um, and then I wipe them out just so I can see the texture there. Um, I tried putting some on a skewer and putting the stain over the skewer but then the skewer swelled up and it wasn't good. So anyways the potato masher is what I recommend. And here what I'm doing is I'm just um, taking a single bead, I'm using part of a skewer and dipping it individually. Now the thought here is that the skewer inside the bead would prevent glaze from getting inside, but um, some glaze does get inside, so you're going to have to go back over this with a little brush um, pipe cleaner. Um, I happen to have a mascara wand that I can use, um, and then uh, once I have done that, now I get to glue all the pieces together. It's really important at this step that you make sure the holes align. So I like to line them up so I know which pieces are going with what. And then I go through the, the glue process. Next up, I'm taking an ear syringe and I'm applying the main color for the wings. Um, which is going to be Stokes Blue, same as the beads. And I'm just getting it in every little nook and cranny. After I have, um, and if you notice here, I left the stain off from inside the circle, so I'm going to come back and address that. Now what I'm going to do is take a metal rib, a thin metal rib, and just scrape away so I just see the texture within the wing. 
I'm going to follow that up um, by painting on Rutile over the top. It's important that when you do that step that you wear like an N95 mask. Now I'm just getting a better brush so I can finish putting the Rutile around the wings. Here's my attempt to uh, roll just the edges of a bead in a glaze color. This is sapphire blue for my pop of color. And um, these ones you're going to have to fire a little bit differently. You're going to need some furniture for it. Now my dragonfly is ready to go into the kiln. I have the wings glued onto a cookie. I have my beads glued onto the iron discs. And then those also put onto a cookie. And now I can put them on the cart to be fired. So the other little beads off to the left there, they're going to require special furniture. So here are some furniture ideas for you. You can get this furniture at your local clay supply store. I am so pleased with the final result. Here it is. This is my Stokes Blue Dragonfly, which will be assembled at the next class. Well, I hope you had fun. Take care and catch you next time.